Although your flats should highlight the design and the details, no color, many times designers want to show or at least indicate where a graphic will be, particularly if it's something like a place graphic or an embroidery. And even though you're just indicating where it will go, a lot of times we want to have some interest and look embroidery like. So today I'm going to show you some techniques to make your design look like embroidery in Illustrator. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mikkel Drew Pelham. I am a digital fashion educator teaching digital fashion design and communication through my company, 383 Design Studio, as well as an adjunct professor at the Fashion Institute of Technology. Before I show you these techniques, I wanna first say that these are simple techniques that you can use to make something look more like embroidery when you're using Illustrator. There are other more intricate ways to do this that make the embroidery look even more realistic. And if you need your embroidery to look even more realistic for like a presentation or something, I would suggest using Photoshop. Or if you can, bring it into a 3D program. But if you need to indicate your embroidery design on a fashion flat or a tech pack, or if you need to show it on a fashion CAD, these are great methods to use. So let's dive in. Satin stitch is probably the most used embroidery stitch that designers use. And if you're not sure what a satin stitch is, here's what it looks like. I'm sure you guys have seen this before. It looks like a really tight zigzag stitch. The first option you can use is creating a brush. And there are two ways you can create the brush so that it looks like the satin stitch. The first way is to create a rectangle. Draw a skinny rectangle, then create your definition box around that rectangle and make sure you leave a little space next to it. Be sure there's no color on the definition box and send it to the back. Then drag the rectangle and definition box into the brushes panel. This will be a pattern brush, and if your art has a lot of corners, you'll want to make sure you auto-generate the corners. And this is what it looks like. The other option is to create a tight zigzag brush. I made a previous video on how to create a zigzag brush in Illustrator, so I'm not going to get too detailed on how to do it now. But one thing I will point out is that because you want it to look like a tighter brush, make sure that you have a high number of ridges per segment. And as I mentioned in the other video on how to create a zigzag brush, be sure that each end of the line matches. Then add your definition box, drag it into the brushes panel, and now you have a second brush option to use for your satin stitch. Now the way I'm using it now is more like a zigzag cover stitch over the edge of an applique, but you can definitely use it to fill an area and make it look stitched. There are lots of other effects you can create with brushes. It really just depends on the type of embroidery stitch you're looking for, but you can also use graphic styles. The graphic styles you'd be using are the scribble effects. And while there are lots of options here, probably the most practical are scribble five or six. Scribble six is great and preferred because it will automatically take on the color of your fill. Or if you just want a black embroidery-esque look for the artwork on your flat, this will do the trick. If you're thinking you want something a little more artistic or more hand embroidered and loopy, you can also try Scribble 3 or Scribble 4. But these are definitely not the look of standard machine embroidery. So these are all fun options, but if you're looking to show basic machine embroidery, especially just to indicate it on a flat sketch, here's what I prefer. Select your art and go to Effect, Stylize, Scribble. Make sure you choose Stylize from the Illustrator Effects menu, not the Photoshop Effects menu. There are lots of fun options you can play with in this menu, but for the machine embroidered effect, choose Tight under the settings. You can play around with the angle, spacing, variation, and some of the other options, but the default settings are pretty good. 
And of course, what's also nice is that if you want to show the design in color, say for a CAD, it's easily recolored by changing the fill color. The last thing you can do to give it a little dimension is to add a quick drop shadow. I usually decrease the opacity, move the X and Y offset closer to the artwork and bring down the blur a bit so it doesn't look so dramatic. And voila, you have a quick and simple effect that looks embroidered and can be used on your fashion flats and fashion cats. Thanks for watching today's video. If you're looking for a croquis template to draw your flat sketches, you can download mine for free. Just check out the link in the comments. Also, if you're new to Illustrator and need to learn to use it for fashion design, check out the link in the description to my beginner class. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you find it helpful. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you next time.